Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by... Infinity of Memphis has moved to Germantown Road just half mile north of Wolf Chase Galleria and is proud to support WKNO for its quality broadcasting and service to our community. Quality and service? No wonder Infinity of Memphis feels at home on WKNO. The WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. My guest today on Sports Files is four time world jiu jitsu champion Joel Gingery. When you think of the martial arts discipline known as jiu-jitsu, images of the great Brazilian fighters come to mind. Why? Well, it all started in Brazil. But once the great instructors in that country made their way to the States for a chance to make a more lucrative living, things started to change. Today, the U.S. is a dominant force in all of the martial arts. And right here in the Bluff City, four current world jiu-jitsu champions reside. One of those champions is Joel Gingery who happens to be the most decorated and universally known of the quartet. The former Millington High School wrestler is a four-time world champion in jiu-jitsu and has not been scored upon in the last three years of competition. Three years! He's also a black belt in judo, which matches the one he owns in jiu-jitsu. And, oh, did I mention Joel just happens to be a former Navy SEAL? Yes, he's one bad dude. But he's also a great guy and humble as they come. At 50, Joel says he's not about to slow down. He's training, he's instructing, he's parenting, he's working a full-time job. He's amazing. Today, the unassuming, reserved, four-time world jiu-jitsu champion, Joel Gingery, and he's next on Sports Files. Joel, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Appreciate you being on the show. All right, let's start from the beginning for our viewers who really don't know a lot about martial arts. We'll start with jiu-jitsu. We'll go back to judo as well because you've won championships in judo. But most recently, obviously, it's jiu-jitsu where you've dominated and won the, the four world championships. What exactly is jiu-jitsu? <clears throat> jiu-jitsu is just a, it's a grappling art. Uh, and what we do is we use... Uh, like body mechanics and leverage to uh, put people in arm bars, submission holds, and uh, um, just dominant positions. Like a, in, it's based off of a fighting martial art, so like you, you score points off of uh, the position of uh, dominance. So like the mount or taking someone's back in the back mount or something. So what would be the difference between just normal wrestling? Um, wrestling's goal is to, like it's a, it's a takedown. And then it's also a lot of control, but it's, uh, their, their objective is to get someone on their back. Mm -hmm. And in jiu-jitsu, we fight a lot of times off of our back. Okay. So. Judo, going back, and again, this was earlier in your career, what would judo be? Um, now, ju I think Brazilian jiu-jitsu is basically an art that comes off of judo. Um, and uh, what, it, what they did, the Gracies back in the day, mm -hmm. uh, learned judo from uh, one of the masters that came from Japan. And what they did is they basically, um, Elio Gracie, you know, took what he thought was more relevant from that art and kind of created his own style. So it's offshoots of, of that. Yes. When did you begin in martial arts? Uh, when I was a kid, probably 10, maybe How, eight, eight or 10. What, what, what got you hooked on the sport? Um, I don't know. I just, I went and, uh, first I started, uh, uh, Taekwondo as a kid and, uh, mm -hmm. um, as the instructor, I would lived on a base. So the instructor moved and, uh, the next, next thing was judo. And, uh, once I started judo, it was something that I just loved. So, so you lived on uh, a base, your, your father in the, in the service. Yes. And of course you would follow suit. We'll talk about that in a second. So you began little Taekwondo lessons, just like I started when I was young. And of course I didn't, I didn't go further than, than Taekwondo and things of that nature. You obviously took it to a, a whole nother le level. You just came back in, in late October, you won the world masters in the, in the Gi. Yes. And then in November, uh, the no Gi, um, you've won what four world championships. Now you have not been scored upon in three years of competition. Joel, how is that even possible? I guess sometimes it's luck. 
it's hard work. Uh, I train with some of the best people, you know, that I could train with. Um, my training partners push me, you know, on a daily basis, and uh, um, I was just my day that day. When did you know, as you were starting your career, and, and you, you you have a, you have another career? This is this is basically a I don't know if you want to call it a hobby. You're a, you're an instructor, of course, but when did you know you could be very good at this? Um, I guess probably when I was. Uh, in high school, I you know I I did judo and I wrestled, mm -hmm. um, and uh, in high school uh, I I became like the we consider like a high school all American in judo. Mm -hmm. And like that was high, Millington. Uh, yeah, Millington the, High School. The, the Millington High School didn't have a judo program. I I I was doing judo with the Navy base. Okay. And so we traveled to the high school nas not nationals, and I placed in the top uh, top five in that, and so. Um, that that's when I felt like I could do really well. Speed, strength, both agility as well. What's the most important aspect of the sport to be successful? Uh, I mean, it's got to be a combination. But is there one that's more important than the other? Uh, of speed and strength, mm -hmm. I think technique is probably the best thing. But I think uh, to be a winner, you have to train hard. So a lot of it is done before you even head to the yeah. championships, before you, you hit the mat. The, of the world championships, does one stick out above the rest? The first one. Uh, that was the, the very first one uh, that I won. I, I was uh, the one that I was, you know, overwhelmed with. Where was that at? It was in Long Beach, California. Okay, and that's where it normally is? That's where you just came back from? Yeah, in, this or, year the World Masters was held in Las Vegas. In Las Vegas, first time. okay. What, what's the difference between gi and no gi for people out there that don't know? Uh, the gi is when you have the white uniform on and you can grab it. Uh, the no gi is basically you just have a, like a rash guard with the surfers wear and some board shorts. The city of Memphis in this area has produced not only Joel Gingery, has produced a number of world champions, which is pretty astonishing when you think about it. So... There were some other champions that went out there or that ended up coming back with you that had championships as well. Why don't you tell us their names as, as uh, people know? Kayla Patterson, my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. She won the adult purple belt uh, no-gi. Um, Eric uh, McMahon. Eric he, McMahon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he also uh, won the uh, blue belt uh, world masters. And um, Nicole Inglesias. Uh, she also won the, uh, she actually won the World Masters Gi, and then she got second in the, uh, this year, in the No Gi. What does it say about this area? Because I know it's a terrific area for the martial arts, for MMA, terrific fighters, ter terrific athletes from this area. But what does it say to have four world champions from just Memphis? Um... I just think that we're doing the right things now. We're starting to come up, you know, we're up and coming. Uh, you know, <clears throat> before it was the Brazilians were, the, you know, winning everything. Right, and I want to get into that in a second. And, uh, you know, we're starting to see Americans, the Americans starting to make a big pu push for the uh, titles. The, the Brazilians really, really started it all. Um, is what you guys are doing here in, in the States, is it, something different is it a different style are there things you've added to what we saw when it first began with basically in brazil well back in the 90s when the, you know the first ufc's came out and everything um in brazil you know you had all the top instructors and i think uh since the 90s when the gracies first came over here all the top instructors started coming to the united relocated states relocated to the u.s yeah. So if you think about it, like you have Marcelo Garcia in New York, you have Henzo Gracie in New York, you have, in California is just a hotbed of, you know, all the Machados, you have the Gracies. Um, Florida has the American top team with Ricardo Laborio. Uh, you, so now you're starting to see all the top instructors come to the United States, uh, which I guess probably more uh, lucrative for them. Right. But uh, they, <clears throat> you know, I mean, they're still... You know, 
the, they're still great fighters yeah. in Brazil. <laughs> yeah, and still great coaches. No, no question about so. it. What do you get out of it the most? Um, it's, for me, it's the biggest stress reliever ever. Like, I can go there and be in the worst mood. Right. And when I leave there, it's like, what was I mad about? Once, once, once you've beaten up somebody, <laughs> you feel pretty good about it, right? You also have a son who's a champion, too. Tell everybody about him. Yeah, when he was 15, he took it a little bit more serious then, but he, he was a juvenile world champion. And what's his name? Parker. Wow, that's amazing. So. And did you have to... Now, you have three children. Do all of them participate in the... They all started in it. Uh, okay. My daughter, she... She got out of it quick. She moved on to something else. <laughs> yeah. And then my, my youngest, uh, he was probably the best, but uh, he just kind of got bored with it and started playing basketball. And... Right. So you let, them, you let them find their own way. If it's something they want to follow Pops' yeah. footprints, then they go ahead, and if not, they do something else. I push for it, to, but... But not too hard. <laughs> Sometimes they say I do too hard. Your workout regimen just blows my mind. Tell everybody how much you have to put in when you're okay, let's say you're preparing for world championships. Give us your work regimen for the week. For the week, I, it's usually five days a week. If you know, depending on my work schedule at the med or regional one health. There you go. Um, but uh, if it's a five-day week, I'll uh, get up in the morning and I usually will lift weights. Then at 11 o'clock, I'll go do jujitsu, mm -hmm. and then I'll take a break. And then come back at that evening and do jujitsu again. So two times a day, I do jujitsu and then I do strength and conditioning. If you're not prepping for a championship, what do you cut it down to? Um, usually just the two days a week. I mean, two times a day on jujitsu, but not as not as focused and it's not as hard. Will you still go five days a week? Yeah, you still go five days a week. Obviously, there's a lot of folks that help you. It must be interesting because you have whether it be sparring partners or workout partners. And I know all the great folks over at Memphis Judo and Jiu-Jitsu, Memphis Fitness Kickboxing as well. And, of course, Dave Ferguson's a friend of mine. Um, it must be interesting, though, when you're, you're like the champ. You're the best. So how, how do people that, um, I don't want to say below you a notch, but you are the ultimate, how do they help you get ready? Because I know there's some great, great uh, Yeah, we, we have some we have great instructors and we have great competitors and mm -hmm. students. Uh, we have guys that, you know, don't even compete that are just really good. And, are you uh, still learning? Yeah, every day. What is your ultimate goal? Do you have any um, in, in the sport? I just want to, you know, be the best coach I can be, be a, the best competitor I can be right now. Um, that's my ultimate goal. So people watching this right now, they can actually themselves or their children or even grandchildren can get instructed from a world champion, right? Yes. They can contact you. Um, you were a Navy SEAL. Tell me about that. Um, went, joined the Navy in 1987. Uh, out of my buds class, we had 105 people start. 13 of us graduated. And I uh, went to SEAL Team 1. Served until 91. After the first Gulf War, I got out. Well, first of all, thank you for your service. Thank you. Uh, I, I know that is uh, pretty impressive to everybody that's, that's watching and for me interviewing you to know that I'm sitting here talking to not only a four-time world jiu-jitsu champion, but also a former Navy SEAL. As hard as it must be to win a jiu-jitsu world championship, I can only imagine it's that much harder <laughs> to become a Navy SEAL. Yeah, it's difficult. Um, but it's just a certain mindset that you have to do to, you know, just to push through. Very similar, similar mindset that when you, you know, when you got someone that's on top of you trying to submit you, you know, not to, to give in. When you were a Navy SEAL, when you were in the Navy, did you have to leave this sport behind or were you able to do things while you were serving? Uh, left it totally behind. Wow, so, so how many years was that? Four years. Wow, uh, how hard was it to pick it back up? Um, it was a little difficult. Like uh, when I first came, you know, the, the, the prime time of my life would have been when I was in the Navy. Right. And so when I started, I started back, I started judo. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, I started competing into my 30s. Well, I started re-competing re when I was in my 30s. And uh, that's how I basically I started jiu-jitsu is I was at a judo tournament. And, you know, I'm in my mid-30s going against guys who are, you know, 18 years old. And I was watching this guy 
do jujitsu out there, Brazilian jujitsu. And I was, I was telling my, I asked my, my training partner at the time, I was like, you know, what is this guy doing? And he was like, this guy is a half Gracie purple belt. And he was just killing people. Wow. So that's how you got turned on yeah. to him. May I ask how old you are now? 50. No, you're not. Yes. No, you're not. How long will you continue to do this? Till I'm 90. Really? I'll just continue to do it forever, I think. I would imagine that this is not only an incredible workout, but you talk about trying to stay in shape. And we're not, and I'm talking about people going to extremes, <laughs> but to just get into this as a way to stay in shape, it must be tremendous for people, right? Oh, yeah. We, it, it changes people's lives. Um, we have a guy that came in that was over 300 pounds. He's about 200 pounds now. He was a you know, diabetic that was taking, had an insulin pump. He's no longer, you know, he's just taking some, uh, treating his diabetes with uh, diet and wow. some oral medications. So. But I would imagine it goes hand in hand with also, whether it be dieting or just changing your habits of eating, right? right. It, goes, it goes hand in hand. You never, we were talking before we started taping, you never got involved with MMA, right? No. Why did you stay away from that? Um, just my age. Um, mm -hmm. Now, I, I help, you know, prepare a lot you of people. You help fight yeah. fighters, right. So, it back, especially when, you know, back in the early 2000s, you know, when this all uh, was here, my, my first coach, he was fighting on some of the bigger events, and, you know, we were training to get him ready. And then we have some, you know, guys now that are up and coming that, you know, help train in jiu-jitsu. So if you were younger you probably would have gotten into MMA. But if you did, obviously you would have had to have learned all uh, the disciplines. Right. Because you want to be obviously well-rounded. It's your best chance to be a good fighter. Uh, what do you think, even though you weren't into MMA, what do you think the hardest discipline is? In MMA? Yeah. Um, the hardest discipline is, I don't know. I think, you know, for me, I, you know. I is would it jujitsu? Jiu-jitsu is, you know, it's a pretty complex discipline. Right. But I, I can't take anything away from striking. You right. Know, because I think that would be pretty complex also. And so is wrestling. So Exactly. The three main, you know, I, I think they're all important. And, what, uh, what's, your, uh, what's next on the schedule for you? When's your next? I mean, is it a whole year before you go back no, and the next, No, the next tournament we're going to be getting ready for uh, right after the first of the year is uh, the Pan Ams, Pan American Games. The Pan Am Games. Have you competed in the Pan Ams before? I, I have. And how have you fared? I, I won them. My gosh, Joel. Have you lost ever? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it happens. Everybody loses, and uh, I've, you know, I've lost lots of times. Well, I know that you are not into this type of publicity. You don't do the interviews. You don't <laughs> seek attention. So I want to thank you for letting us get the, the word out about you and about how good the fighters are here in Memphis uh, in the mixed martial arts, especially in jiu-jitsu. So thank you for that. But before we let you go, you're still on the hot seat, my friend, because we like to end all our interviews with something we call Five for the Road. Five for the Road. Easy questions, first <laughs> thing that comes to mind. And I don't know, with all your time with Navy, Navy SEAL and then, of course, becoming jiu-jitsu world champion, instructor, you work out... You're working all the time. I don't know how much you're able to watch other sports, but what's your favorite pro sports team? Pro sports team? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I wonder how much time you have to watch. I would say, uh, I don't know. You got, a, you got a pretty darn good team here in this city. I, the, I like the Grizz. There you go. Yes. There you go. How about your favorite pro athlete? And this could even be a, a, somebody in jujitsu all time or a fighter. Um, I would I would probably say Marcelo Garcia. Okay, uh, favorite music or genre or the '90s alternative. '90s alternative. Give me a band that you listen to. Uh, Alice in Chains. Okay. Do you like to listen to a lot of music to fire you up before a fight? I don't. You do not. No. Most of the athletes we have in here always say they do. So you do yeah. not listen to that. Not at all. Okay. Big Alice in Chains fan. Favorite movie of all time. Top Gun. Why? I <laughs> just. It's my favorite. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's a good movie. It's a good movie. Minus the volleyball scene. I think it's a good movie. <laughs> All right. Favorite TV show of all time? Um, TV show? When you, when you really have a few moments to relax, when you go home and you un, unwind, what's on, the, what's on the tube? On the tube, I would say right now, Longmire. Longmire? Yeah. I don't even know what that is. Just a little sheriff. I, I, there's Banshee. I love there Banshee. You go. There you go. 
and, and make sure and make sure, of course, in a couple of weeks, um, you know, obviously you got this show, Sports Files. Continue to watch that. You know, okay. maybe that'll become your favorite show. It will. Joel, thank you so much. Thank you. Absolute pleasure. It's Joel Gingery. We'll take a break. Overtime is next. And a big thanks to Dave Ferguson and all the folks in Memphis Judo and Jiu-Jitsu for helping us out. Well, from one way to stay in shape to another, and this one is probably a little bit more up our alley. Kevin Baskin is a master fitness trainer at LA Fitness, and he joins us this week for our latest installment of Fitness You Can Live By. How you doing today? My name is Kevin Baskin, master trainer with LA Fitness, and I'll be demonstrating some core exercises for you today to strengthen your upper lower abs, your obliques, and your lower back. The first exercise I'm going to demonstrate is called Russian Twist. So as you start, you want to sit back, knees bent, cross your feet, engage your core, and raise your feet if you're able to. Three, four. And make sure you're breathing while you're doing these exercises. You want to breathe in one side, exhale on the other. The next exercise I'll be demonstrating is called a plank. And you want to start out in a kneeling position with your elbows down and come up on the toes. And as you're as straight as possible, engaging your core, you want to make sure you're breathing and keeping your body in a proper alignment while you're doing it. And hold maybe 30 seconds to a minute. And relax. The next exercise is a mountain climber. This one's a little bit more advanced, but it's something for you that are occasionally working out pretty regular. You come up, push up position. It's one knee in at a time. And relax. Try to do 30 seconds to a minute. You can follow, also follow this one with a different exercise like a push up or something else if you're working for strength. The next exercise will be a Superman. This one's going to isolate your lower back. Slide flat, arms out. You really want to try to squeeze and get a good pull up to work your lower back. The next one is called it's a, just a basic crunch. With the feet flat, two versions. Reaching up, keeping your head and neck in alignment, and squeezing and tightening your abs as you pull. The other version for your lower abs, raise your feet. And be sure to breathe when you're doing these exercises. The next few exercises will also work your core. We have one that specifically works your obliques. It's called a side plank. You start out with the elbow under the shoulder. Just raise up and hold. Make sure your core is engaged and you're breathing. Holding your body as straight as possible. And then you relax. Then you'll switch sides. Same as the other side, body as straight as possible, core engaged, and make sure you're breathing. And relax. We we'll also like to go to a couple of military exercises that you can use with your hands under your butt to help protect your lower back. Six inches. And both feet, same time. Just throughout these exercises, you want to make sure 
your core is engaged, you want to suck your belly button in like you're trying to make it touch your spine to help protect your lower back. And the exercises we went over today were side planks, Russian twists to target your obliques. The plank to help stabilize your core and also the mountain climbers to get your heart rate up and also strengthen your core. And these are just a few of the basic core exercises you can do at home, in your office, wherever you are, just to get some exercise in during the day. And hopefully I was helpful to you. My name is Kevin, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, Kevin. One other note for you. New Tigers head football coach Mike Norvell has hit the ground running when it comes to recruiting. Before the dead period arrived this past Wednesday, Norvell signed several junior college standouts, including one-time Tennessee Vols quarterback Riley Ferguson, who passed for 2,900 yards and 35 touchdowns this season in JUCO. Mike has also been filling his coaching staff and observing Tigers' practices as they prepare for the Birmingham Bowl on December 30th versus Auburn. And that's going to do it for now. Have a Merry Christmas, everyone, and we'll see you again next time. Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by... Infinity of Memphis has moved to Germantown Road just half mile north of Wolf Chase Galleria and is proud to support WKNO for its quality broadcasting and service to our community. Quality and service? No wonder Infinity of Memphis feels at home on WKNO.